subscribe and share. Please, turn off the ad block, subscribe, and share. Links will be below for anyone wanting to support this channel. Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and I'm the founder and owner of Tech Views Now and today we are going to get into how to troubleshoot your hard drive, specifically a mechanical hard drive, and what you should do about it. Specifically where this issue came in play, I recently ran into a major problem with my mechanical hard drive on the server. In fact, I made a video that will actually be posted a little bit after this one. And basically what that video was going to be on is specifically how it's going to fix that problem within the server itself, at least the software side and begin stages of it. But many other real world problems came about, so that one got extended quite a bit and it came into more of what is some real world problems like what do they look like and how do you deal with them as they come so as far as that goes let's get into the um, how to on this so this one's going pretty easy and short so again my problem was the hard drive mechanical hard drive was making sound a hard drive any type of mix sounds figure it out if it's a um, solid state you really need to figure it out because nothing should make noise since there's no moving parts and you can easily have electrical problems so electrical fire but if uh, it's a mechanical hard drive then you pretty much need a new hard drive usually what it will sound like is metal rubbing against metal or some scratching or something like that and its mechanical parts are rubbed against each other and you got to keep in mind if the platters are scratched then they're completely useless the platters themselves when they're built the entire hard drive internal hard drive it's built in a clean room much cleaner than the best actual hospitals that you go to so where you get surgery that's much much more dirtier the air is than the clean rooms that those hard drives are put together in so with that one in mind it's uh it's very crucial for there to be no scratches no anything that, that gets in the way with the reed head and the platters so what i would advise you to do is if the actual hard drive is being used quite often like where that was a a computer that was converted into a server that would have been a good idea to make it into a solid state drive of course i wouldn't have been able to do or at least at this time i'm not able to do it because of the cost and solely because of the cost whereas a mechanical was 50 dollars and a um, solid state is, is $300 and I can't even afford a mechanical so obviously a solid state at this time is out of question but um, as far as that goes what is some things you should do and um, what how can you tell which one of your hard drives if you got multiple of them is uh, is the one causing the problems and what was some potential things that you need to be looking out for as you're troubleshooting? So as we said, one of the biggest problems is, is the mechanical head hitting the platter, which is causing the noise. This in itself can be caused by wear and tear, which is most of the time, but it could potentially be caused by a virus. This is not a common thing at all so i wouldn't jump to this conclusion but it is possible so i really wouldn't be taking a hard drive and put it into a, another computer without doing some shields around it and scanning it like crazy if that came out clean then then it'd probably be perfectly fine otherwise 
it's something that you got to keep in mind. Now, with that in mind, if you um, if you put the hard drive and it's failing into a uh, new computer, you can still run into some other problems, like the hard drive literally exploding. That actually does happen, and it sounds like a bang when it happens. So, why would you put a hard drive in a new computer anyways, a broken hard drive into a new computer? You can get information off of the old hard drives, just like you do with your phones, just like you do with uh, flash drives. You can pull it off of the old hard drive, put it onto a healthy one, and that way you extend the life of the data and you're able to do something with it. So... After you made sure that you backed up your stuff, if possible, if that was one way or maybe you got some other ways, you need to check it. The easiest way to check it is by figuring out who made the hard drive itself. And specifically, um, what model is it? So the best way to do that is by going to the device manager on Windows go to disk drives and your hard drive should look something like this search that in Google and that should tell you who actually made it and that's the model and stuff now with understanding who made it if it's Seagate if it, I mean pretty much any of the major manufacturers is going to have their own tools but you can use them cross boards but it's better to use the manufacturer that you go with and um, with this download the manufacturer's diagnosing tool and that will tell you if it's a healthy hard drive or not in fact in the video where things just went wrong and kept going wrong and there's it was almost a train wreck of the video I show this in the healthy hard drive, it went 100%. With the unhealthy, I don't know if I showed that part. The unhealthy one, the one that was broken, unfortunately was the main one, but it never even went to 1%. And it, after a while, I was like, forget it. And I think by that time, I, I wasn't recording anymore, but I switched to um, the, the computer itself is self-checked stuff and it found problems left and right with the uh, with the unhealthy hard drive the corrupt hard well not corrupt hard drive but the unhealthy hard drive so with that you can do checks with that method by downloading the manufacturer's diagnosing program there's also a self-check again with the most computers which I highly advise it's a lot easier and a lot better to deal with. Keep in mind, I'll do the extensive test, especially if you heard something with the hard drive, extensive test. Now, if, if you just heard one slight smudge, you might be okay and you might not read anything on the test, but if it happens over and over and over like two or three times, test it and you probably will find something Especially after the fourth or fifth time, you'll probably definitely wait or something or, or see something on that test. But I'll advise you to either use a manufacturer's test or the computer's test itself. And that will tell you itself if there's something wrong. Now, what is some indications that you're going through some hardware failure? Well, the easiest way to indicate it is is a major slowdown in your computer now a major slowdown can be caused by many things but given that you eliminate ram and all the other stuff it is probably hard drive so i want to suspect a hard drive just out of the gate do a little bit of troubleshooting but you can narrow it down to a hard drive now the e easier and other ways to figure out if your hard drive is about to fail is simply if it's again making noise that's pretty much a telltale sign 
Another is if information, large amounts of information is getting corrupted. It's a pretty good way to tell. That doesn't happen that often though. And the other is um, is where the computer just glitches out and stops. And usually by that point you'll get something like on Windows a blue screen and other operating systems, something saying you got a hard drive failure or potential hard drive failure. So that's a, a very, very, very important thing. What to do when you get a hard drive failure? It's pretty simple. Do what's called a full metal backup if you care about the hard drive, especially if it's with the operating system on it. The reason why is otherwise you gotta install and do a whole bunch of other things with the uh, having the CD and stuff with a new hard drive. And this could be a major problem. So my advice is to simply have it where you do a full metal backup and that way you can swap out the hard drives as needed. Now with this what I would advise to do is to use Dropbox just in case it both the hard drives fail for whatever reason or whatever cloud service, online cloud service to back up important things, photos, music, so on. And that way, if both the hard drives fail for whatever reason, which is possible, but not likely, that you will have a ultimate backup, especially if you're using a major service like Dropbox or Google Drive. It's pretty much almost a guarantee that you're gonna have this stuff backed up even further. Now, with that, that's pretty much all you can do with hard drives. There, there might be one or two extra things, but by the time that you hear noise, look for a new hard drive. Again, if it's a commonly used system, a commonly used device, it's also drives are the best. So things obviously like phones, um, tablets, TVs, things of that nature. Obviously you're gonna have Saw state because those things, aside from TV, phones and stuff like that is going to move quite a bit. But let's just throw that out. You will want a saw state because they're used constantly. And TVs, while they aren't moved, they're used so much as basically constantly. Now, with um, laptops and stuff, if you are in an environment that shakes a lot, like a lot of vibrations or whatever for whatever reason then you might want to get, think about doing a saw state again no removable parts but um, if you're in an area where you're as far as what you're using is not highly used a mechanical may be the best keep in mind saw state drives are not uh, all in for all they do have limited rights so they will end up running out and they have their own lifespan. And also on top of that, they're very expensive, but the trade-off is they're extremely fast when you compare it to a mechanical because it's right there, all the information is right there. And the second and the biggest is that it, um, since it doesn't have any moving parts, the chance of failure from anything other than the reads and writes is extremely low to almost non-existing. But again, it's very expensive and it has a limited amount of rights. I think it's for an average user is about five years, but um, th this, this could be a stand out depending on how much you use in short. And also, one thing to add in here, since I'm already talking about it, don't defrag a saucy drive. That will shorten down the life dramatically. But anyways, as far as things go, hopefully this has answered some questions. And um, again, this has been Craig Bennett, founder of Northern Tech Views, and I hope you have a great day. If you like this, please like, please subscribe, please share. 
And also please feel free to check out the other videos and also check out the and follow the Twitter. Now, if you didn't like this, feel free to leave a dislike and tell me why I suck fix in future videos. Again, this has been Craig Bennett, founder of Tech for you. So, hope you have a great day. Thank you.